Okay, so question number five, part D. All right, so Ting believes that the probability of the ball landing in the bucket is not the same for each throw. He suggests that the probability will increase with each throw and uses the model PI equals 0.15I plus 0.1, okay, to um, give the probability where I is 1, 2, and 3, and PI is the probability that the I throw of the bottle, oh, sorry, I throw of the ball by any particular child will land in the bucket. So the probability changes with each throw. As the, the child throws um, another ball, the probability of him getting the ball in the bucket will increase according to Ting's model. Okay, so the random variable T represents the, prob the number of times a ball lands in the bucket for a randomly selected child using Ting's model. So we got to find the probability that T equals 3 is 0 0.055. So the probability that the person hits the ball in the bucket three times is equal to 0 0.055. So first of all, let's just look at the probabilities according to this guy Ting's model okay, uh, for each particular throw. So for the first throw, what he's saying is um, you're going to get basically um, 0 0.15 times 1 plus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.15 plus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.25. And for the second throw, you're going to get 0 0.15 times 2 plus 0 0.1, which is going to give you 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.4. And for the third throw, you're going to get 0 0.15 times 3 plus 0 0.1, which is going to be 0 0.45 plus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.55. So those are the, the, the probabilities of hitting the ball in the bucket, according to Ting's model, for the first, the second, and the third throw. Okay, so now we've got to find the probability for D part 1 that he gets all three of them. So it's basically just the probability that t equals 3 is basically going to be hitting the first ball in, hitting the second ball in, and hitting the third ball in. And that's going to be basically the product of all of these. 0 0.25 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.55. Okay, so you're going to have 0 0.25 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.55. It's very easy to make a mistake and press, press the wrong button when you're doing these, pressing multiplication or addition instead of multiplication. So be careful about that. So 11 over 200, which is 0 0.055. So we know that we're on the right tracks in our thinking. Okay, so we can, we've, we've shown that, that, that. That's good. All right, and then it says part two. It says find the probability according to Ting's model, that the person gets the ball in the bucket one time. That's what that means. So that means basically he's going to hit it only once. So it's either going to be hitting on the first, but missing the second and the third. So these two will both be missing. Or the other probability that he, he misses the first, but he gets the second in, but then he misses the third. That's only hitting once. Again, hitting with the second throw. Or he hits, he misses the first and he misses the second. But he gets a third throw in. Okay, so I'll just make some space here. Okay. So basically, you've got to think about this, and it's a good idea for you to write maybe next to this, that missing the first throw is going to be given by 0 0.75. I'm not supposed to write in this area here, but I'm just doing it. I'll say, and missing the second throw is 0 0.6. And missing the third throw is going to be 0 0.45 okay so we, we don't get confused so basically you're going to have hitting the first which is going to be 0 0.25 but missing the second and the third so you're going to have 0 0.6 times 0 0.45 okay so you've got to be really careful when you're doing this so you don't mix up your numbers it's easy to do that okay Missing the first throw 
is 0 0.75 and hitting the second throw is 0 0.4 and missing the third throw is 0 0.45 okay and the final one missing the first throw is 0 0.75 and missing the second throw is 0 0.6 and getting this third throw in is 0 0.55 so what we need to do now is just add multiply these and add them all together so the probability that t equals 1 is oops the pen's a bit messed up here t equals 1 is going to be given by this plus this plus this. So we're going to add them all together. It's going to have. We're going to be really careful when we're doing this on the calculator. I'm going to make a silly mistake. What's this not working for? Anyway, so you have 0 0.25 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.45. Okay, plus 0 0.75 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.45 plus 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.55. It gives you 9 over 20, which is 0 0.45. So you can see that it gives us 0 0.45. I think a good idea for us would be to show that we've added these together. Okay, so I would actually write down the, the value of this and this and this and show that, you know, you've added them together to give us that because this is a show that question. So I would, I, I think it's better for us to actually do that because um, you want to ma make sure you've shown all the s steps because if it's show that the answer is really there, they're going to be very cautious to make sure that you've done the right thing so I would actually put this 0 0.0675 the show that questions are very um, useful because you know that you're on your right tracks but then again you have to be very careful to show your steps carefully in case they think you've fiddled your answer somehow okay so you have to sh make sure that you make it very clear to the examiner what you've done that's plus 0 0.135 and plus you should write this down already 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.55 that gives you 0 0.2475 let's make sure we wrote the, those down correctly so plus 0 0.135 plus 0 0.0675 gives you, yeah, that's the right answer. Okay, so we, we know that we're on the right tracks and we've shown all the steps very clearly here. So there we have our answers. Okay, now the next part is part E. Complete the table below to show the probability distribution for T, stating the exact prob probabilities in each case. Okay, so now what we got to do is find the probability of getting no balls in the bucket and two balls in the bucket. Now, what I would suggest you do here is do the thing that's easier. Find the probability of getting no balls in the bucket, which is going to be, so we're answering part E over here. Probability that T is equal to zero is going to be given by, basically, the product of these three. 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.45. That's missing each time. So 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.45. Okay, and you can find out what that is. Just multiply those together. So you have 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.45. And that gives you... 0 0.2025 so that's 0 0.2025 0 0.2025 okay then 
instead of going through all of this stuff to find the probability of getting it in twice, we know that, that these all have to add up to 1. So if I add to this 0 0.45 and 0 0.055, Okay, and I do 1 minus my answer, I'm going to get 0 0.2925. Okay, so that was uh, 0 0.2025. Okay, if you wanted to show the steps for the next part, you can say the probability of t equals 2. is equal to 1 minus and you can just put all those values in do this this and this okay you can show that step I'm not gonna write it down there and that will be the steps for finding the problem that t equals 2 okay so there we have the answer to part uh, D and E now we've got left part F which I'll do on the next page it says state giving your reasons whether Sandro's model or Ting's model is more appropriate for modeling this game so what we need to do is get all of the information together that we have collected from them. Right, that's what we have so far. Now, um, I want to compare these two to this. Okay, now, you'd think, how can I compare them? Um, if you try to compare them by the mean expected value, all of them gives you 1.2. Okay, if you, mark, if you did the mean value of this, it was 1.2. We worked out in the first question. If you did the same for this, I mean, I did it before just to check. If you did it, if you did this times this plus that times that plus that times that plus that times that, you get 1.2. And the same for this. So expected values won't help us here. So we've got to think of something else. So what, what we can do is, remember, there was 80 throws here. There's 80 throws here. So let's find the probability that x equals x here, basically. Um, that would be 16 out of 80 for this one, first one. 16 divided by 80. Let's see what the probability of that is. That gives you 0 0.2. So that's 0 0.2. And this is 36 out of 80. So let's work out what that is. 36 divided by 80 as a decimal is 0 0.45. And this is 24 out of 80. That gives you 0 0.3. And then you're going to have um, 4 out of 80 which gives you 0 0.05. Okay, so we can see here, if we compare the probabilities for Sandra's, this is the, the actual, this is Sandra's and this is Ting's model. If we look at um, the, you know, what, what's closer, they're all pretty close, but you can see that um, for Ting's model, every time it's a bit closer, 0 0.2025, 0 0.2, 0 0.216. This is closer than that. Okay, so this is closer for the first one. For the second one, it's exactly the same, it's closer. For the third one, again, this is, this is closer to 0 0.3. And for the last one, 0 0.05, 0 0.064, 0 0.055 is closer. So you can say that uh, Ting's model, okay, um, gives a closer probability in each case okay uh, to the sorry my handwriting is getting messed up here to the actual model to the actual uh, data actual data data in part A. Okay, so that's, that's I think, a per perfectly good answer worth three marks for that question. And there we have finished question number five.